Good afternoon. This is Opokuari virtual learning class. And we're looking at um, integrated science, HHS 3 integrated science. The topic for discussion is crop production general principles. I am Kenneth Osei, popularly called uh, Bullets. The objectives, the main objectives for this particular lesson are as follows. At the end of it, the lesson, the students should be able to one, define a crop plant, two, classify crop plants based on their growth cycle, three, outline the production cycle of crop plants, and four, describe pre planting and planting activities in crop production. Now a crop is defined as any plant that is deliberately um, cultivated and guarded for human use. How are they classified? Based on the growth cycle. On the base of the growth cycle, we have three main groups. That is annual crops, biennial crops, and perennial crops. Annual crops are crops which complete their life cycle in just one growing season. Examples include maize, um, sorghum, tomato, etc. Biennial crops, these are crops that complete their life cycle in two growing seasons. Mostly the exotic um, plants such as cabbage, carrot, lettuce, and cauliflower. Now perennial crops, these crops will stay in the field for more than three years. And they are mostly tree crops which include cocoa, orange, oil palm, mango, etc. And the production cycle of crops can be grouped into four main categories. We have pre-planting activities, post-planting activities, sorry, planting activities, there are post-planting activities, and the last one is harvesting and post-harvesting activities. Now we're looking at pre-planting activities. Now this includes side, uh, selection of appropriate crop varieties. Now in selecting specific varieties of crops for cultivation, we consider the following factors. Um, this includes soil requirements, so you need to uh, know the appropriate soil or suitable soil for a particular variety of crop to be grown. We also look at climatic requirements, i.e. temperature, rainfall, and humidity. Drought tolerance, as to whether that particular variety is tolerant to drought or not. And then it should also be selected based on resistance to pests and diseases. And then we also consider maturity period as well as consumer preference or market. Because at the end of the day, um, the focus is that when the crops are matured for harvesting, um, they are harvested and sold. Now the second activity that must be looked at is site selection. After settling on a particular variety for um, cultivation, you consider selection of site. And to select a particular site or a suitable site for um, crop production, these factors must also be considered. Type of soil or soil structure. Basically, um, the type of soil which is suitable for most crops is loamy soil. In the sense that loamy soil is well drained, it is good in aeration, um, water holding capacity is good, and then also it is also rich in 
um, nutrients or organic matter. And then we consider climatic conditions. Again, we look at suitable temperature, humidity, and then adequate um, rainfall. Topography or nature of land. Preferably, the land should be gentle sloping or flat in the sense that this will minimize um, soil erosion. If a steep sloping land is chosen, the tendency that the soil, the topsoil will be eroded is high. So uh, we should consider going for um, a type of soil that um, is gently sloping or um, is flat in order to minimize erosion. Availability of reliable source of water. As, uh, water is an indispensable uh, factor in the sense that it is required for effective growth and production of food uh, through photosynthesis. And then availability of labor. If you are growing on a large scale, labor is very important. So in selecting a site, make sure that you choose a site where labor can easily be assessed. And then again, um, we consider availability of markets. Now the third activity is land preparation. Land preparation, and this involves land clearing or clearing of vegetation, what has to do with using cutlass or machines or hole, depending on the type of vegetation, to clear the land. And then, after clearing of land, the soil must be tilled. So, soil tillage, which has to do with physical manipulation or breaking down or stirring and turning of soil for effective germination and growth. In fact, the soil must be in a very good condition to support effective germination and plant growth. And that is why it must be tilled. And tillage involves basically um, plowing, harrowing, and raging. Now, why tillage? Or what are some of the significance of soil tillage? One, the soil is tilled to ensure easy penetration of water into the soil. It also enhances root penetration. Tillage destroys larvae and pupa of soil borne pests and diseases in the sense that once the soil is turned over, um, eggs, larvae and pupa of insect pests are exposed to the scorching sun to be destroyed. The soil is also tilled to mix um, fertilizer or organic matter um, with the soil to make it ready for planting. It also helps to control weeds. Once the once plow or harrow is used to tend the soil, it cuts through the soil to expose the roots and then seeds of weeds in order to get them destroyed. And then finally, um, it helps to control soil erosion. Seedbed preparation. Now a seed bed is a place where seeds are sown, germinated, or seedlings are raised. Now what are the importance of uh, seed bed? Seed bed is prepared to help control soil erosion because it helps to reduce the speed of runoff. It increases the depth of soil surface. Once the bed is prepared, you have a lot of topsoil garden, and that will increase the depth to enhance effective growth of um, plants. It promotes good drainage and aeration. Again, once the soil is plowed and harrowed, it is loosened to ensure effective um, drainage and aeration. Types of seed bed. There are two main. There are two main types of seed bed, and these are raised beds and sunken beds. Raised beds and sunken beds. Raised beds are normally prepared by gathering topsoil, which is raised above the surrounding soil. And then this is normally used 
during the rainy season in order to control soil erosion and also promote um, good drainage. Sunken bed, this, this is a type of bed which is set below the main level of the surrounding ground and it's normally adopted during the dry season in order to conserve soil moisture. Now let's look at planting activities. What goes into plant? So we now move on to planting activities. And the planting activity, we have methods of propagation. There are two main methods. We have sexual or seed propagation and vegetative propagation. Seed propagation simply has to do with the use of seeds to raise new individuals. And um, some factors must be considered in selecting um, a particular seed for propagation. Now the factors include germination percentage. When we talk about germination percentage, it has to do with the number of seeds that will germinate out of the seed lots that are planted. For example, if you plant 100 seeds, and at the end of the day, let's say 75 of the seeds germinate, we consider germination percentage as 70, 75%, in the sense that it's going to be 75 over 100 times 100. So the total seed, you, you divide the number of seeds that germinated by the total seed lot planted, and then you multiply by 100, and that will give you a germination percentage. And a suitable seed to be used for propagation must have high germination percentage. Preferably, it should be 80% or more. And then we have seed viability. This describes the ability of the seed to germinate when suitable conditions are made available. So a viable seed is a seed that germinates under suitable conditions. And then the presence or absence of physical defects such as mold, cracks, because this can affect the germination percentage. And then we have the presence or absence of disease and pest attack. If you go for seeds that are affected by disease or pests, the embryo in particular may be affected. If the embryo is affected, it means that your seeds are not going to germinate. So you look for seeds that are free from pest and disease attack. And then we have methods of seed sowing, it's like planting. How do we sow our seeds? Or how do we plant? We have broadcasting that has to do with scattering of the seeds on the field. You scatter the seed, the entire seed lot on the field. And sometimes you may have to cover lightly with soil after broadcasting. And the second method is drilling. This involves making of shallow furrows or trenches, especially on seed beds, into which seeds are dropped and then at the end of the day you cover lightly with soil. This is normally applied when or adopted when the seeds that you are planting are very tiny. Dibbling or spot planting. And this involves making individual holes into which seeds are um, deposited and covered. Time of planting. Planting should normally be done during the rainy season, especially in the rain fed farm. If I talk about rain fed farming, farming system that depends solely on the rain. Most of our farmers in Ghana depend on this. So we say that our agriculture is rain fed. However, you may plant during the dry season when you have a reliable irrigation um, facility. Now the depth of planting is very important and again this depends on the size of the seed and the moisture content of the soil. Now the size of the seed is a function of the uh, endosperm. The endosperm we know um, contains food reserves that is needed by the seed to ensure effective germination. So the bigger the seed, the bigger or the, yeah, the, 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 the bigger the endosperm. And therefore, you can plant it deeper as compared to smaller seeds. That must be planted very close to the soil um, surface. All right. Now seeds are sown directly on the field or nest and transplanted. 
some of the seeds can be sown directly in the field, others too must be nest, after which they are transplanted. Now what is nursery is a place where seedlings are raised before transplanting. And it has its own significance. What are the significance of nursery? The seeds when nests are protected from being washed away by rain, uh, most of the seeds are tiny and they are planted shallowly. So if you don't take good care of them, they can easily be washed away. So if they are nest and proper care is given, then they are protected from being washed away. The seedlings get better protected or they are better protected from diseases and pest attack because at the nursery you make sure that um, you spray against disease, you spray against pests, and then you do it at the place where um, there are no weeds in order to prevent the occurrence of disease and um, pest conditions. Seedlings get a good start. In fact, because you are giving them intensive care, we say that they get a good start. And then seedlings are protected from harsh environmental conditions. For example, the scorching sun. If you sow your seeds and the sun is so hot, the, the soil temperature increases and that may um, affect germination and may destroy the seeds. So it is advisable to provide shade, for example, to protect them from um, the scorching sun, which is considered as a harsh environmental condition. Seedlings may be pricked out at the nursery if they are overcrowded. Uh, breaking out has to do with transfer, the transfer of seedlings from the nursery bed or the seed bed to another bed when they are crowded. So that they will also be taken care of until uh, they are ready for transplanting. Harding off. This has to do with gradual exposure of seedlings to higher light intensity and temperature prior to transplanting. So just as... Um, when footballers are moving out of Ghana, going to play in another country that has a, a, a particular climatic condition different from what we have. Sometimes they are, they, are, they are taking somewhere to get themselves acclimatized to a weather condition or climatic condition that is similar to what they are, just, they are going to play uh, the match. So we do the same for crops when they are um, just about ready for transplanting to make sure that they will not suffer when they get to the, the new field. So this is achieved by reducing shading and water supply. Transplanting, that has to do with transfer of seedlings from the nursery bed to the main field. And this is preferably done late in the afternoon or in the evening. The reason being that during that time, transpiration is reduced to the barest minimum. So it will help to reduce transpiration to enhance the survival of the seedlings after transplanting. Now, that has to do with um, seed propagation. Now, we have vegetative propagation. This simply refers to the use of any part of the plant for cultivation except the seed. And vegetative parts of crop plants include bulbs, um, rhizomes, sockets, stem, tubers, etc. So any part of the plant that can be used for propagation except the seed is considered as a vegetative part. Now, summary. We say crops are classified based on their growth life cycle into annuals, biennials, and perennials. The production cycle of crops include pre-planting activities, planting activities, post-planting activities, harvesting, and post-harvesting activities. Now the pre-planting activities includes selection of appropriate crop varieties, size selection, land preparation, whilst planting activities um, include methods of propagation, seed sowing, and transplanting. God willing, at our next meeting, we'll look at post-planting activities as well as harvesting and post-harvesting activities. Thank you, and may God bless you.